Carol is one of my favourite authors. I actually haven't read anything new by him for quite some time, but I discovered him when I was young. When I was young, I never needed anyone. Actually, that's the opposite. I was probably a bit desperate for everyone, for the love, for the adulation. You can't find the treats, can you? Um, you're looking in the right direction. They're in a kind of a tall up packet. It's very boutique looking beef jerky for dogs. This dog isn't going to get off this couch anytime soon, are you? I don't really want a smelly little dog on my couch, but there you have it. Okay, so Jonathan Carroll is amazing. He's kind of a, in the fantasist genre. Um, he can only find peanuts for the dog. No, I don't give the dog peanuts. We don't want you to choke. Uh, I might have to come over. This means you have to take over the video and speak. Yeah? Come on. Come over and talk about something while I find the dog treats. This is my first bloggy thing, so I don't really know what I'm doing. Okay. And Aaron's going to talk about something to you. Here. Welcome. Good afternoon. This is the uh, the dog over here, as you can see, um, being very doggo. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know much about dogs. I've never had one. Come with me. Come with me, little doggy. Hmm. Treats were on the bench. That's why you couldn't find them. Oh, that, the, okay. the shaking of the video. That was the dog's <laughs> tail. Okay, come here. Yes. Sit. Hopefully the dog does not Good destroy boy. the uh, precarious setup arrangement we have. Yeah. <laughs> um. Treat. Oh. What? No, you're a vegan vegetarian. You don't want one of these. <laughs> not good treats for humans. Okay, I might have to talk to you about um, this. So if you shuffle over into the dog's former glorious residence, I will talk to you about these books. Shuffling. Shuffling. Shuffling away. Okay. You should be shuffling. Shuffle hogs. Oh, darling dog. Is your seat gone? The dog's not going to be happy about that, but you cope. There's this <laughs> top of his little head. Okay. So, the books I have with me are... You're no longer mysterious. Huh? Oh, my God. Who no. is this man? Well, um, do you want me to be mysterious? Only if you, you, I only want for you what you want for yourself. I don't know what I want for myself. What? <laughs> what I want for you is to have a good read. And Jonathan Carroll, the first book I read by him was hey. Bones Across the Moon. Sadly, I lent it to an asshole who never gave it back. Um, that person wasn't an asshole simply because they didn't return my book. They're an asshole because they were an asshole anyway. Um, probably, you know, just they just took took a book for granted, like me throwing a cushion onto the floor. <laughs> this is waffling a bit, but that's okay. It's the first time I've done it, so you know. Um, Bones across the moon, incredible. So it's like mm. a fantasist genre. Um, manages to create it's still this world ish but it, he has a way of introducing surreal elements mm. so seamlessly that you can accept it you can you you just totally go okay yeah that could happen um he actually quite often features uh, a dog that talks which mm. i like <laughs> i don't actually you know have a dog a traumatic experience owning a dog as a child, which I won't go into because I don't want to make you cry. But the next book that you read after Bones of the Moon is A Child Across the Sky. And I got this a long time ago, a really long time ago. Um, it's just oh, so cool. Uh, the other ones that I've got by him are After Silence and From the Teeth. Teeth, teeth, teeth of angels. Um, there's also probably a lot more that he's written that I haven't read, but mm -hmm. I, 
I find the way he writes just beautiful. Um, things are not resolved in his books. Shit happens and sometimes we just don't know why. Uh, things can be extraordinarily random. Like in A Child Across the Sky, he always opens with something that you think, oh, I've just got to keep reading. So it starts with, an hour before he shot himself, my best friend Philip Strayhorn called to talk about his thumbs. <laughs> Yeah, see? Thumbs. Yeah, ever noticed when you wash your hands how you don't really do your thumbs? This is weird because I just watched um, Graham Norton the other night and Debbie Harry was on mm. and apparently her latest book, she's got a whole chapter about thumbs. Huh. I wonder if she's read this and it influenced her. Thumb. What do you mean? It's your most important finger, but because it sticks out away from the rest, you don't really wash it. A little dip and a rub maybe, but not nearly enough attention for all the work it does. It's probably the finger that gets dirtiest too. That's what you called to tell me, Phil? It's very symbolic. Think about it. What are you reading these days? Plays. I'm still trying to find the right ones. Anyway, on it goes. I won't ruin it for you by giving anything away. That's the problem with me. It's not much of a review because all I'm saying is if you have a tendency towards enjoying um, surreal elements mm. and something that kind of messes with your mind, but it just takes you on such a beautiful journey, I think <laughs> I think it's worth it. And just one out of the box, just because a completely different cup of tea, David Sedaris, extraordinarily well known, and uh, he writes memoirs i suppose whether half of it's true we just don't know he's really funny um and i think half of the stuff that's funny it's not even necessarily intentional it's just part of his life um or maybe it is intentional it's so hard to know he's extraordinarily clever extraordinarily funny writes very candidly about um things that have happened to him. He has a famous sister also, Lisa Sedaris, and she's a quirky little beast. And um, yeah, like, I'll just read you a bit of the very first page from Naked by David Sedaris. Chipped beef. I'm thinking of asking the servants to wax my change before placing it in the Chinese tank I keep on my dresser. It's important to have clean money, not new, but well maintained. That's one of the tenants of my church. It's not mine personally, but one I attend with my family, the Cathedral of the Sparkling Nature. It's that immense Gothic building with the towers and bells and statues of common people poised to leap from the spires. Anyway, these are like um, selections of writing, and some of them might grab you, and some of them you go, oh, I don't know, that's a bit tiresome, and you can skip to the next thing. But... Um, I've found a lot of the stuff that's about his actual, his own life, really awesome. Um, and in the same uh, way that Augustin Burroughs writes really candid, interesting stuff. Mm. But David Sedaris is probably more intellectualised uh, than Augustin. But I like them both equal, just, you know, different flavours. Anyway, those are my views. Are there any books you've been reading lately, Aaron? <laughs> yes no maybe um i'm still in the middle of reading uh an abundance of catherines by john green i think it is an abundance of catherines yeah Ooh, do tell <laughs> it's uh it's quite a quirky little story i think most of his are um it's about this guy who Seems to, seems to he only wants to date girls with the name Catherine, oh. and so far he's managed to be dumped by about twelve of them, and he wants to work. Catherine with a C or a K? A K. Or it, it has to be a K. Yeah. Okay. You got this very sort of. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> yeah, it's a very strange sort of character. Hmm. Um, it's quite funny. Hmm. So you haven't finished it yet. Don't know what happens, but. Okay, mm. good, good. Certainly an interesting concept. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I've just <laughs> discovered Jasper, what's his last name? Ford. Jasper Ford with two Fs. Um, I found a $2 book by him, and 
in the op shop and oh my god so oops, fucking good <laughs> shades of gray now don't be confused <laughs> it is not to be confused with 50 shades of bad writing this is uh oh, i just i'm in love with this book um once more Jasper Ford, Shades of Grey, and the opening uh, thing. This is a, an alternate version of England in the future. A morning in Vermillion. And there's a, it's pre prefaced by a, what would you call that? Like a, like a excerpt from a whole lot of rules. You know, 2.4.16.55.021. Males are to wear dress code number six during intercollective travel. Hats are encouraged, but not mandatory. It began with my father not wanting to see the last rabbit and ended up with me being eaten by a carnivorous plant. <laughs> it what? wasn't really what I'd <laughs> planned for myself. I'd hoped to marry into the oxbloods and join their dynastic string empire. But that was four days ago, before I'd met Jane, retrieved the Caravaggio, or explored High Saffron. So instead of enjoying aspirations of chromatic advancement, I was wholly immersed within the digestive soup of a yate... Ye how would you say that? Yetevio tree. Yetevio? I don't know. It's invented, I think. <laughs> I haven't researched I think, that, yeah. I don't know. It was all frightfully inconvenient. But it wasn't all bad. And for the following reasons. First, I was lucky to have landed upside down. I would drown in under a minute, which is far, far preferable to being dissolved alive over the space of a few weeks. <laughs> Two bucks. Good score. So now like I'm it. I'm yeah, working my way back through his older novels, hmm. um, which are the Thursday Next series. Um, I am not... I'm not as grabbed by Thursday Next, that's the name of the heroine, as I am by the character in Shades of Grey. But Shades of Grey is one of his more recent books, and I think his writing and mm. his the empathy you feel for the character is deepened by the time he's got here. Whereas Thursday Next, it's like I'm enjoying it, but I'm not in love the way I was with this. So when the, ne the he is going to write more apparently with um, Shades of Grey, so I'm really excited. It's a world in which uh, people can only see one shade of colour, and that determines the hierarchy that you're in. Oh. Yeah. So the purples are the hmm. highest, and if you're grey, you're on the lowest part of the scale. So it's totally reflective <laughs> of the way our life actually is, but it's just yeah. totally exaggerated into this you know this fictitious society reminds me of that thing divergent oh yeah it's um a bit like that only the sense of humor in this is what puts it up yeah. and above anything <laughs> like that um yeah. i mean divergent a lot of those um kid not kids but you know young people novels i really like but they were so dark and they left humour. You know, there's no humour. Yeah. And this has got so much humour. I mean, there's a little bit of darkness, but the humour wins in the end. And mm. I think that's some um, bloody clever. Anyway, thank you, Jasper Ford. You rock. Um, I, I've talked to you probably more than enough. So, yeah. Anything to <laughs> add? Any wisdom? Any pearls? Uh. Any pearls of wisdom you wish to jizz all over the screen? <laughs> Oh, that's so rude. I didn't say that. Look, I'm old enough to be his mother. Like, I'm practically his older sister. Yeah. Oh, we're not we're not partners. We're friends. We met on a writing course, of all things. And the writing course guy, what a dick. But anyway, that's another story. Okay, thank you very much for joining us here today. That's my tight smile. Yeah. Or a tampon mm. smile. <laughs> ah, click right that's enough the dog's happy we're happy <laughs> now how do we stop this thing how do you stop it you can't stop it that's it okay <laughs> where do i stop it oh this uh, bit here <laughs>